All right, what's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday, and welcome to our first episode of I've Got 10 in 2019. So excited to be with you. I'm your host, John Stamper, and with me today is Manal Sampat, who comes to us. I always say this all the way from Washington, but if you're on the West Coast, like it's not all the way, but it is in that very beautiful part of the country. Manal, thank you so much for, for joining us here on I've Got 10. It's always a pleasure. You do so many great things in dentistry, and I love having you on the other side of the camera. Well, John, thank you so much for having me. You know how much I love live shows. Yes. So this is this is super fun. And I love what you're doing because, you know, it's very hard for us to communicate sometimes when we are so far away. But look at us. Here we, Here we are. Go. Here it's we just are. like you and I chatting across the table. That's exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's what it feels like. Hopefully that's what it feels like for everybody else. Okay. So. Yes. So you're probably wondering why Manal, what's going on? I mean, she has a very, very popular, you know, Facebook uh, live show, Mocktails with Manal. She's always interviewing people, but this time she's on the other side of the camera because what we've done is Robin Morrison, for many of you that do not know her, uh, has started a awesome company called Dental Consultant Connection. And what she has done is she has put together a whole host of amazing consultants in the industry, all have their own individual expertise and is doing some great things. So what we thought we would do is start this podcast series. We're going to have Robin was very gracious enough to have one of her team members join each week here on Thursday for whoever long, however long in 2019. And we're kicking things off with Manal. Manal is a marketing expert. She does so many things in marketing. And so we wanted to bring her on and have her share a couple of tips uh, on I've Got 10. And our whole focus on this podcast series is going to be some ideas and tips for the startup practice and for those of you that are getting started out and growing and things like that, but also for the seasoned. Sometimes there's some commonalities, but as Manal is going to share with you with a lot of our experience, uh, there can be different things that you do for the startup practice versus the season. So Manal, the floor is yours. It's a pleasure to have you and thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for letting me share all this wonderful ideas and strategies. Um, you know, for startup practices, in order for you to have any kind of business, to be successful in a business, it's, you know, anybody who has been successful in a business, they always talk about know your audience. Because if you know your audience, everything else falls into place. And for startups, which I work with a lot, I always ask them, okay, you're starting up and you know, when you're starting up, you're super excited and you wanna attract everybody to your practice and you wanna become the dentist. And that's great, that's what you want, but, who do you want as your ideal new patient? Who is your ideal avatar? And I'm gonna go a little deep and crazy with you here, but there is, there is, there is some thought to my madness here. So, so come with me, okay? When you create an ideal avatar, I want you to name the avatar, whatever it is, Tom, Jenny, Mark, Manal, whatever you wanna call them. Name your avatar and then write down all the attributes that go into your avatar. So for example, I want my avatar to be in a certain age group. I want my avatar to have a family. I want my avatar to be living in a single family home or I want my avatar to be living in apartments. I want my avatar to be living um, you know, in this specific area, perhaps around a certain miles from your practice. They need to be spending money at these places. They have to be going on vacations or I need them to be going shoe shopping, whatever it is that defines your ideal audience, your ideal avatar is where you start. Because once you start exactly you know, where you want to be, that means that if you have an ideal avatar, you know where that avatar hangs out. So your marketing becomes easy because you can just break through all that marketing noise of, should I be doing newspaper? Should I be doing magazines? Should I be doing social media? Should I be doing digital media? What should I be doing? What you should be doing is where your ideal avatar is. So for startup practices, before you begin any kind of marketing, create that avatar, figure out what they like, where they will be hanging out, and then create your messaging so that you can convert the actual patients you want to see in your practice. You know, when I was growing up, my father always used to say, I don't want you to waste money, I want you to spend it. And that's such a true thing when it comes to marketing. And there, because we live in a world of constant marketing noise, it becomes very important for us to break it all down, just break it all down and focus on where is my ideal avatar? 
what marketing outlets will get in me in front of my ideal avatar and then what messaging should i have so your message is very different when you are trying to attract a 20 some year old or a 30 some year old to another 50 year old to a 60 year old so then define your messaging you have your ideal avatar you have your marketing platforms that will bring you in front of your ideal avatar and then you work on the messaging that will convert and then the last thing you really want as a startup practice is that engagement, is that interaction, because people will come to you because you care. People will come to you because you listen. So don't lose out. Don't just do marketing and then we're like, well, why is my phone not ringing? So if somebody decides to engage with you on your marketing platforms, engage back. Tell them that you are watching, that you are listening and you are here to answer it. So that's for a startup practice. Now. If you are an established practice, and this is the number one thing that I see uh, as a roadblock in so many of the established practices I work with, is they would start a marketing campaign and they will just focus on one platform. So for example, they will just say, hey, you know what, we are just going to do marketing and we're just going to do an internal marketing. So let's say they're having a cool referral system inside their practice. Well, if you're doing internal marketing, that's fine. But if you're only focusing on what's happening inside your practice, and communicating about it with the patients who are in your practice, you're missing out all the other patients who are not physically in the practice then. Your patients come to you every six months or they come to you when they need a treatment. So don't lose the, all the other ones out who are online or who are on your email sequence or uh, who you can call and communicate with. So if you're doing internal marketing, make sure that you are also using external, community, digital, and social media marketing. Here's an example. Let's say that you are doing this awesome whitening, you know, it's, it's January, new year, new smile kind of a deal, and you want to really focus on doing a whitening campaign. And you start internally. So internally, you want to make sure that you have a beautiful flyer of what the whitening services is. You want to make sure that there is, in, even if you have an L banner, something that what John has, if you see behind him, he has a banner with logos on it, right? It's called an L, L banner. An L banner is something that pulls up, and you can have it directly in your waiting room. Perhaps you have a bulletin board. Perhaps you have something in your waiting room, and if you don't, you should, have something in your waiting room that shows what's going on in your practice. What is that big campaign you're focused on internally? You also need to make sure that your team knows what's happening. As a hygienist, there have been so many times where maybe I was not involved or not told what is going on in the practice, and guess what? I have an hour, at least 45 minutes to an hour with a patient. So if I know what's going on as a campaign in the practice, especially if it is something clinical like whitening or a procedure, you bet that I should know about it so I can tell my patients about it. So your team should be involved clinical and admin team internally with any marketing campaign you have. So if you're whitening, have your team be involved in it. Tell them what's going on so that everybody can chat, chatter about it, okay? And I even say, make a big deal. So if you're doing a whitening campaign, go crazy in your office. You know what, people are visual. I want you to take uh, photos, you know, print out photos and get those, uh, you know how they have the ropes, where drying ropes with the little clips, put it around your office. Put how your entire office should look like a photo gallery of happy smiles, white, white, white bright smiles and talk about it. Now the same thing, you know, so if you have the internal, you have to focus on the external part of marketing as well. So external becomes a lot more with digital media and social media and how people are communicating about you. So once you have the internal marketing, you have this whitening campaign. Do you have the same whitening campaign on your website? Can people easily find it? Once they have a whitening campaign on the website, do you have an opt-in? So if somebody's interested in learning about your whitening campaign, can they call you? or can they opt in so they receive an email from you that talks about the whitening campaign? What is your lead capture? Okay, so you have it on your website, which is digital marketing, and you're putting it directly there. You can also put it on your online search engine pages. So for example, a Google business page allows you to have a post. So go ahead and add that whitening post directly on your Google business page so that every time your page shows up, they will see what the running campaign is in your office. Now, the same thing goes with social media marketing. If you're doing a whitening campaign and you want to talk about it, again, it starts internal, but you want to talk about it on social media. So you're doing internal, you're doing digital, you're doing social media. 
you want to have happy, happy patients. And you can break down your social media. You can have testimonials. You can have live videos. You can have photos. One tip, though, don't have photos zoomed in faces on social media because you cannot create them into an ad because it goes against the body image. So have a full frontal photo with a beautiful smile and a beautiful testimonial directly onto your social media. But here's the thing. In order for you to be successful, you also need to involve your community. Your practice exists in a location. Your practice is already somewhere where people know about you, right? So if you are doing internal now and you're doing digital, you're doing social, in your external marketing include, I don't know how you have your signs right now, but perhaps there's a way for you to get a little banner or even to get a yard sign and talk about what your whitening campaign is. Because when people drive by your practice, they have to easily see what's going on. So whatever promotions there are, use them, include them in your marketing because people, you won't, I remember so much stuff when I'm driving down the road. I'm like, oh, I didn't know they were doing that. Oh, that's kind of cool. Don't lose out on that. Don't focus so much on social and digital that you lose out on your community marketing. Another thing that you can do with the whitening campaign, which comes to community marketing with businesses is reach out. Where, who, who wants whitening usually? Brides, graduation, um, any kind of event coming up. So why not go to spas and nail salons and bridal salons and talk to them about whitening and say, hey, listen, we're having this amazing whitening campaign and all the brides that come here who are looking for something, we'll give them a special discount on your name. You know, create that business relationship with them so that you have an audience inside your community. And this allows you, this allows you to be in front of other businesses in your community as well. So in order for you, if you're an established practice, if in order for you to really see conversions in your marketing, you have to have a cohesive plan. I literally write down whatever campaign it is and I break it down. What am I going to do internally? What am I doing externally? What am I doing, doing on digital media, social media, and community? And I go ahead and keep putting out those arrows and go to the bottom of it. Because once you have that cohesive plan, things just start to work. So that's my tip for a, a practice that is already established. For the new practices, I want you to start with knowing your ideal avatar. Once you know who you want to attract to your practice, then we can talk about platforms. We can talk about your marketing messages. And you know what? You can use the same strategy for having a cohesive campaign as an established practice. So I hope that helped. Uh, definitely. If, uh, if you want to, John, did you want to, did you want to tell them where to find me? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, you can go out to uh, dentalconsultantconnection.com. So you can learn more about Manal more about DCC. I'm also going to go ahead and put the phone number up there if you want more information. Uh, yes, people still do use cell phones, right? Yeah. I, call. I hope so. I hope yes, so. Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that's kind of a new thing, right? It's easier to text or whatever. But uh, seriously, 727-447-4756. Uh, Contact DCC. Uh, you can learn more about Manal, how she can help. You can learn more about DCC and how they can help you with a lot of the different specific things in your practice. And so, you know, it's interesting. You were talking about that little banner, as you now people can yeah. see. They couldn't see before because it was all you on the screen, uh, but a little banner behind you. And I love that idea, Manal. I think, you know, it's interesting. Th these are little things as more and more practices are communicating, like you said, on the social media platforms to their patients uh, you know, these little tiny things you can have in your practice. They're not very expensive. I love all your ideas, but I also love you scoping out, thinking about all of them, right? Cause I, I'm sure you see with it all the time. People always wonder like, oh my gosh, we just got the social media campaign. And is that enough? You know, is that going to bring the patients that we want? And, and I was so glad that you brought a lot of those other areas into the mix. So great stuff. Anything to close with as we look at 2019, it's a brand new year. What's something you're really excited about as we cruise through the likes of, holy cow, I can't believe the first month is getting not oh, over yet, but we're, we're getting there. You know, uh, the one thing that I do want to talk about, and I will share a personal, personal little tip, guys. I started my business. I, I'm a, I have multiple businesses and I started my first business uh, six years ago. That's when I first launched my first, first company. And I recently just launched my second company. And here's the reality of things. If you want to see success as professionals, so if you want to grow as a professional, if you want to succeed as a professional, this is not about the patient. This is about you. You need to network. 
I know that this has been true for decades. People always talk about network, 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 you know, but it's actually true. Even in today's day and age, it's so very important for you, especially as a new business owner. If you are a startup practice, get to know people in your industry, you know, come on, listen to this podcast, get all this free information, go, go to conferences, speak to other people because those relationships that you create is what's going to be the most converting factor in your professional life are the relationships that you make with others in our industry. So, you know, 2019 started with me for a big, uh, big, big splash. Uh, you know, this is, I've been on phone calls for two straight weeks <laughs> already. Proposals going out my entire January has been a month of just new clients because of the relationships that I've built and my ability to go to conferences and to communicate with people. So please do that. No matter what level you are in your professional life, keep networking. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I, it, it just got me thinking, Manal. It, it seemed to be like years ago when you when you thought about the things that a dental practice would do in order to be able to grow their business and the marketing that was done and maybe the marketing that would need to be done for a dental company, very different things to do. Those worlds are now collided, right? And I think yeah. to your point, I think a lot of the, when you talk about networking and, and a lot of the things that, you know, someone like yourself and myself that mm -hmm. we're doing now, all of those things can be done by everybody. And, and it helps each individual business in their own right. So I love that idea. Networking is a great idea. Before we wrap, I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the sponsor of uh, the I've Got 10 podcast, Tesis. They're one of the nation's leading uh, providers of payment processing, and they have made a great promotion available. I'm going to go ahead here and put it up here. There's a link on the screen. You can go out. They've created a landing page. Uh, they've got a great team there. And most importantly, uh, check them out. They've, they're making a $300 activation credit promo available to all of my listeners. But I will tell you, I spent some time there at their office in Charlotte. They love to just talk on the phone to a lot of dental practices all over the country and answer any questions for you in regards to what you're currently using. Is it working with payment processing? So many things are changing. As many of you know, credit cards, more and more patients are using them so they can help out. And again, thanks, Tesis. And I want to give a big thanks to Robin Morrison and the DCC yeah. team and Manal for you. Uh, you're a oh, busy person. You. Like you said, proposals <laughs> everywhere. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming on. I've got 10. Well, just to let everybody know, Manal and I are going to do an audio podcast, which will be on the Digital Trade Show, then audio podcast. So if you guys want to listen and learn a little bit more about Manal, she's a super interesting person uh, be sure to uh, download that on itunes or google play and with that have a wonderful week thanks one all bye bye